morning, everyone. I hope that everyone is doing good today, April the 22nd. Uh, staying safe and staying healthy. So we're going to talk a little bit today about running your real estate business during the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. While we're doing our presentation, uh, we want this to be interactive. So you guys um, can, can uh, put your questions in the chat box. Uh, there's going to be a Q&A. And I think also uh, we're going to do a couple polls as well. Um, so when those come up, we'll, we'll advise you guys of those as well. I'm Ryan Coleman, president and one of the owners of the Broward and Miami-Dade Real Estate Investors Association and also president of National RIA. And I'm here with uh, my partner in crime, brother from another mother, the CEO and other owner of RIA, Anish Jave. Yep, living uh, live from Las Olas in Fort Lauderdale. <laughs> We're you know, getting ready for a whole different kind of uh, a webinar. Um, we do see you guys uh, getting on board. Uh, we're excited uh, to actually have a uh, have this event, and and you know, again, we're just growing our businesses the same way, uh, and you know, feeling through this uh, new thing that's going on with all of us. So, absolutely. And our special guest, Kevin Thatcher, owner of Independence Title. Hey, Kevin. Good morning. How are you guys? Title King himself. <laughs> I love that promo this morning. <laughs> there you go. Great, yeah. This I'm getting exciting. good at those Instagram stories, you know. It's the only thing we can do now. We have to learn to, to be good at everything we weren't good at before. And, Absolutely. Uh, this has given us a little bit of a challenge, but the good thing is we all work hard and, you know, we're going to be successful no matter what. Like we were in 08 and we'll be again now and, and just adapt to it. So Absolutely. So, guys, we'll give a quick background on us. I know that most of you probably know uh, the three of us, but just in case you don't, um, I've been in real estate for about 20 years. Actually, Anish got me into real estate. Uh, I did start it out with, you know, getting my realtor's license like most people did. Uh, I've done condo conversions, um, about $350 million worth for one of the third largest uh, converted developers back in the heyday um, in the early 2000s. Um, Anish and I owned another company called the Urban Life Design Group where we were helping um, homeowners uh, families of low income, single mothers obtain home ownership opportunities. And then of course, uh, lost everything, the crash of the market. Um, I was a speculator, not a real investor. And um, it went total bankrupt in 2007. Found uh, Bria in 2008, joined their mentor program. And uh, about six years ago, bought all of the companies from our mentors, uh, the Bria and MD Ria. And then in the last year, I've also become president of the National Real Estate Investors Association, over 40,000 members, 110 chapters across the United States. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll also advise you guys at the end of this, too. We have a, a special call on Friday with National RIA, too. So, um, Anish, you want to tell a little bit about yourself? Uh, yes. Uh, so I've been in real estate since uh probably 1999. I have a degree in finance. I've worked in corporate America for a long time as a banker, auditor. Uh, pretty much uh, I hated my job is the easiest way I tell people. Um, I started um, really loving real estate and like everyone else, uh, I also was a real estate agent, still a real estate agent since 2002. Um, my passion is people. And for us, same thing, you know, I met Brian, we've been friends for about, you know, almost 20 plus years, uh, was a, a fantastic speculator from 2004 and 2005 and 2006, uh, had over, you know, close to $3 million of, of properties in the Haida market, got wiped out. Um, and then in, just like Ryan, I did, we both did a national program. We did Bria's old program and, you know, wholesaling and investing really, um, was something new to me and I couldn't understand how people would actually buy a house and not fix it up and someone else would buy it on the same day. So to me, being around real estate for a long time, I was shocked to actually hear that you could actually do this. Uh, long story short, obviously Ryan and I became the owners of Bria and the Miami Day Bria. Um, and you know, the difference really between the last pandemic or um, breakdown, I should say the financial crisis in 2008, I really wasn't prepared. I was scared. Um, I didn't know what the heck I was going to do. Uh, this time, I'm, I'm in a better situation, or you know, meaning you know, we're we're at the right place at the right time when we get through this too. So, absolutely, Kevin Thatcher, tell me a little bit about who the title king is. <laughs> well, I wasn't always the title king. 
Uh, I've always loved my job, no matter what I did. I was a firefighter uh, back uh, after high school and uh, moved down to Florida 20 days before September 11th. And, and my wife and I came up with the whole strategy about, you know, why I became a firefighter and, and what I love most about it. It was really um, being able to go in with my team and getting out with my team and making sure we left no one behind. So that's what we do today. I've been doing this since 2001 down here in South Florida, opened my first title company. I worked for an attorney uh, prior to, opened my first title company in 2003. Uh, and we've been doing closings ever since. We've done over 10,000 closings. I've authored five books. I speak uh, all across the state, many different events, uh, typical to, to investor clubs like this, uh, as well as real estate events. And we close on average, you know, obviously before the pandemic, we closed, uh, you know, upwards of 80 to 100 closings a month. Our best month was, I think, 126 closings. Uh, now we're down slightly. And the thing is, I, I follow exactly what Ryan and Anish both say is, you know, I suffered through 2008 and I learned so many lessons, which are, I wrote about in uh, my recent book, which was titled Rescue Your Business. Uh, I wrote about in the book how I survived the global pandemic. I knew what I needed to do. And now I move forward and, and here we are, we're here, we're still operating. We've uh, trimmed down as low as we can and, and we're rocking and rolling. Absolutely. And guys, you know, one of the things that uh, uh, Anish and, and myself and, and Kevin all share is the fact that we all three went through the crash of the market in 2007, 2008. So, you know, hopefully we've, we've learned our lessons from that time and, uh, uh, and, and that's going to make a big difference to now because now we know what signs to look for. We know how to adapt to these um, these types of situations. Not exactly, obviously, a pandemic. <laughs> this is something new to all of us. Uh, but the effects on on real estate um, are going to be very similar in regards to a lot of homeowners not being able to pay their mortgages. You got a lot of Airbnb properties that are going to go under. So there's going to be a lot of opportunity and things out there and. You know, by, by, you know, one of the things that, that today we wanted to talk about, and especially having Kevin here as our special guest, is that he's really on that front line. You know, he, him and his title company, like they are the people that are you know, still going into the office and still running their business so that we as investors and people in real estate can still have our closings and still get things done. So we definitely applaud Kevin and thank him and his team for still putting themselves out there like that. Um, and like you said, you know, he, he was a fireman, you know, before. So Kevin, Kevin knows what it's like to be on the front line a lot. So what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about how to market your business, um, virtual open houses and inspections, screening clients. And obviously all of these things are during a pan, you know, the pandemic, um, how to close a deal during this pandemic, COVID-19 tools of the trade the remote online notarization technology, uh, which is something kind of interesting that uh, we just talked to Kevin about last week, because uh, we actually have a closing coming up that they're working on. Uh, and then the new COVID-19 addendum that uh, Kevin's going to explain to you guys as well. So, Kevin, how do we market our business in this kind of, in this type of uh, pandemic? It's actually one of the toughest things that, that I see business owners are having because, you know, you're, you're trained uh, from being a very young child to do things the way your parents always taught you. And, and, you know, you know how to do things the way you've always been doing it. And I think that's one of the number one challenges we're seeing people have is they don't know how to adapt to uh, the technology. They, they don't really know how to switch their business on and off to different types of, of marketing. Um, so, you know, so when we're looking at a global pandemic, it's, you know, how do you really make it into an opportunity? How do you turn it into an opportunity? You know, so for us at the title company, you know, we learned early on how we can basically turn a switch on and turn a switch off, cut our expenses and be able to just market differently. You know, there are no more live events. We, we don't have a marketing person going to these events and and making sure that, um, you know, you're, you're able to set up a table and get business cards and follow up. So how do you switch your business? And a lot of people watching this are real estate agents, they're investors. And, and now more than ever, you know, you watch all of these webinars, you know, like double down on social media marketing. I'm like, well, maybe not, you know, because for us as a title company, we pull back on our social media marketing because it's a different type of uh, different method of marketing. 
you know, we're looking at a lot of wholesalers that were spending, you know, thirty, forty thousand dollars a month in marketing, and they're part of these, you know, two hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollar masterminds, and you know, they think they're going to double down on marketing, and I'm like, not necessarily. You have to really look at what is your business. And how are you going to market your business? So we talk about, you know, marketing your business differently for investors. You know, you may want to start looking at distressed owners as opposed to other types of properties, understanding that we may be entering a foreclosure crisis. You know, if you start looking at the amount of of people that are on unemployment right now and and remember that that I watched a webinar today, 65 percent of those people that are on unemployment are going their homeowners. So even if after the global pandemic is gone, they were saying that even if there's still 5 million people out of work, 65% of 5 million people, there's a lot of people that are going to go into foreclosure. And if you think by stopping to pay your rent and stopping to pay your mortgage is going to help you, it's not. Because all it's going to do is roll it into the next 90 days and you're going to owe it at the end. Unless they get smart and start tacking it onto the back of the mortgage. Uh, you know, so so we have to really start looking at the marketing and say, you know, what are the trends in a global pandemic similar to a market crash? And what are we going to do different? What are we going to target with online marketing? And if you weren't doing online marketing before, understand that if you just click the boost button in Facebook, you're doing yourself a disservice and you're going to waste a lot of money. We've spent tens of thousands of dollars on Facebook marketing. You need to know properly how to do it. The boost button doesn't work and just posting on social media doesn't work. You need to come up with a strategy. So when we talk about marketing your business, and I know Ryan and Anish can chime in on this, you need to have a strategy. That's number one, a strategy on who you're going to target, how are you going to target them and have a plan in place. And even if you decide that you know, you're going to pull back on your marketing like we did, we're ready to turn that switch on. And as soon as that switch turns on, we have an entire plan ready to go in order to just launch back into the market. So you need to be smart about it. Don't waste your money. Sit on the sidelines, come up with a strategy, and then just go right at it. Absolutely. And then- yeah, yeah, I was just going to add to that is that basically you also have to track it. I know, um, you know, uh, we were, same thing, we we're very new to the social media portion. Uh, we've been lucky to have a, a fantastic SEO search engine optimization guy um, that, you know, people do find us, but we had no idea what the tracking was uh, previously. So we'd say, oh yeah, we'll, we'll try these Facebook ads and spend a bunch of money. It must have worked. Or maybe we did this meetup. So I'm not even sure how many of you guys um, actually even found this webinar, right? It could have been from our website, our text message services. Maybe it's a meeting. We are tracking to really see you know, what our return on investment is. Um, as we, you know, we go through this pandemic, uh, same thing, our marketing budget went down a little bit, but we're being a lot more efficient. Absolutely. You know, a lot of times in business, they talk about, you know, getting in early, right? Like if there's a new IPO, a new stock, some new company or something, the people that got in early were the ones that, that benefited the most. Well, it's the same thing when it comes to marketing. When there's a new platform, the people that got into Facebook early, the people that got into Instagram early uh, were the ones that, that got a, a stranglehold on it and can do it very, very well. Kevin and his team in Independence Vital, they do very good, effective marketing on their social media platforms. So it's it's really about thinking a little bit of ahead, you know, not waiting for other people to do it and then watch them and necessarily duplicate. You got to think a little bit ahead and say to yourself, okay, in marketing my business, the first thing you want to start with is how does this COVID-19 pandemic affect my business, right? So if you look at the things that and ways that it's affecting it, those are, are problems that you have, so then you just need to find the solutions to those. So for us, um, and like Kevin mentioned too, you know, the networking meetings, we used to have, you know, our BRIA meetings with two, 250 people uh, at the Signature Grand, and that's not going to happen probably for a while. And so, you know, we're looking at now utilizing platforms like Zoom and, and uh, incorporating that and marketing those, those, you know, larger meetings and webinars and, and even webinars like the one today. Um, on our social media platforms, which uh, is is not necessarily different than what we were doing before the pandemic, um, but we're now just a little bit more focused because you know we don't have this face to face. So you'd have to you just kind of have to make those tweaks in your in your marketing strategies. And like like Kevin said, you have to have a plan, knowing you know thinking a little bit ahead of of where this is going. I mean, if we're all going to be on quarantine for another thirty days. 
how is that going to affect your business and how can you continue to market your business? Um, you know, we've told a lot of our students that, you know, right now people might not want to have the conversation about, you know, selling their house, especially if they're living in it, if it's a primary residence uh, while they're under quarantine. But what you can do is change your marketing a little bit and maybe just make a contact with people, plant seeds, let them know that, you know, we are a, a, a resource of information. We are uh, directly connected with the National Real Estate Investors Association. The National Real Estate Investors Association, they have um, constituents that deal directly. We have a team that deals directly with Washington. Um, and our CEO, Charles Tassel, he speaks to senators and congressmen and governors on the phone personally. So we are on that front line of, of having that information. So I tell my students, listen, utilize that. You're a member of RIA, so that means you're a member of, of National RIA, and you get that benefit. There's a call every single Friday, so our students have been reaching out to, um, especially landlords, people tired of being a landlords that live out of state. Um, they've been advising them of this call on Fridays to bring them some value, bring them some education, say, hey, listen, I'm not calling you today about buying your house. I'm calling you just to let you know that there's a free resource of information that, you know, it's, since you're, you're a, a, a real estate owner, since you're a property owner, this thing is obviously affecting you and any new legislation or rules or regulations when it comes to rentals and things that come out, um, then it's obviously gonna, gonna affect you. And that's one of the effective things that Kevin's been doing as well is paying attention to the rules and regulations and legislation, again, the things that affect um, his business. So, yeah, one of the things to remember also is, you know, and I, I love and a lot of times when I speak at these events, I tell people, you know, what are you? Are you a real estate investor? And they're like, well, I'm a real estate investor. I'm like, great. Oh, I'm a realtor. Great. I own a title company. Great. I'm a hard money lender. Great. No, you're not. You're a therapist. You are a therapist solving problems <laughs> for people in the local community. That's all you are. You know, so yeah. we, we have people that, that come to us with problems and we simply solve their problems and we make sure we do it the best way possible. So, you know, whether we're working with large real estate firms, teaching them how to generate more business, it's all about problem solving. I know you guys do the same thing. You know, I speak at your boot camps and we pack a room full of people, you know, 30 people at a boot camp, and all we're doing is solving a problem because what, what do they want to do? They want to live a life that they weren't able to live when their family members or their spouse and significant other or their parents are telling them, you got to go to work, you got to get a nine to five job, you got to bring home the check and they want a bigger opportunity. They want a bigger piece of the puzzle. And, and, if, and how do you do that? You solve a problem, you bring them into a room, you teach them how to do something and you solve their problem. So, you know, I look at it and say, you know, we're more therapists than anything and it's all about solving problems. I hear my staff on the phone all day long with people just solving problems. If it was easier, everyone would be doing it. So you just become a really good problem solver and that's how you set yourself apart from the competition and market differently in these, you know, tough economic times. Yeah, yeah. And, and what I was just gonna add is since, you know, we have a lot of different people on the call, um, I was, I'm gonna shoot up a, a little poll. I just wanna see how many investor properties you guys have bought in the last 12 months. So I'm just gonna launch a poll and you guys could um, if you've done none in the last 12 months, you can check that one to three, three to six, seven or more. Um, this gives us a good idea of who's listening in. And yeah, we could answer some more questions towards that end of it. Um, so I'll put that poll up there for another minute and go ahead and just click through. Yeah, and something to remember, you know, you see this poll, look at these numbers, guys, 65% have never done a deal. What does that tell you? They're here looking for an opportunity because maybe they're out of work, they got laid off, they, they're looking for, for a different direction in their business. And now more than ever, they're on this call and they have an opportunity to, to work with people from Bria. You know, people are always like, well, Kevin, how do I work with you? I'm like, well, you got to go work with Ryan and Anish first. Because until you work with them, you're not going to know what you're doing. There's no sense in calling me and saying, you know, I, I was told I need a good title company. Well, no, first you need to get a deal and then you need a good title company, you know, by working with you guys. So, <laughs> you know, this poll alone tells us it, it's, a, it's a huge opportunity right now for people that are on this call that want to change their life. You, you're looking for something different during this global pandemic. And now you have the resource. You found this this uh, presentation. So, yeah, I'll, get, I'll, give, I'll give you guys another 15 seconds and then I'll, I'll share the poll with all you guys out there. So uh, um, obviously, Kevin and myself and Ryan could see the results. And oh, I thought everyone you was able idea. to see that. Sorry, I didn't mean yeah. to ruin that one. <laughs> <laughs> They'll see it in a few minutes. So one of the things, actually, I do want to even, you know, Ryan and Kevin were talking about, um, you know, new ways of marketing. 
Brian and I, and you know, Kevin's more technologically savvy than Brian and I. You would think the Indian guy would be, you know, have some technology background. I do not. So we're learning hands-on, you know, working with Zoom, working these webinars, and and trying to make it uh, something, you know, um, educational and beneficial for everybody too. So. Absolutely. And you guys, you know, Kevin made a good point for those of you that have not done a deal yet and you're looking and, and saying to yourself, okay, now is I think the time that I need to get in, you'd be exactly right. This is the time to get into real estate because unfortunately, of course, we don't wish for these types of situations, but we don't control it. We didn't create the pandemic. We're just going to be here to clean up the mess when the pandemic, you know, starts to loosen up and when, when people start to go back to work, there's still going to be a lot of people that aren't going back to work. There's going to be a lot of people that are losing their properties and we're going to be helping them. Anish and I did a presentation about a week ago and um, he had a, a, one of his favorite quotes from Warren Buffett. Um, you remember the quote, Anish? It was some, something to the nature, um, be greedy. Careful. Whenever, yeah. 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 Guys, be fearful when others are greedy and be and greedy only when others are fearful. And, and it was funny because I was on a I was on a webinar with Chris Goff last night, a, a national uh, educator, and he he said the exact same quote. That's one of his favorite Warren Buffett quotes. But um, but you know, initially I looked at that, and and the reality is is that you know during this time is when you need to be greedy. You need to be thinking to yourself, okay, I want to take control back of my life, get my financial freedom, and I'm going to take advantage of this situation because guess what? If there's not another pandemic, which I've never had a pandemic in the 48 years that I've been on this planet, um, you know, the next market crash could be another, or correction, could be another 10 years from now. So now is the time, guys. So what's our, uh, um, our results from the poll? Yeah, so 65%, everyone could actually see this now, 65% of you guys have not done a deal in the last 12 months, 29%, one to three. Uh, we got 2%, 3 to 6, and we got a couple people that are really out there doing deals, seven, uh, seven or more deals, 5%. So meaning you're not alone. You're at the right place at the right time. So don't ever think, I remember when I first started, you know, Ryan, you probably could say the same. I was like, oh my God, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm, this is too scary. Um, all of us, including Kevin, you know, we all had to start from somewhere. So don't, you know, don't beat yourself up. This is the first step. And something yeah, to know by looking at the poll, you see it's four people that, that have done, you know, three or more deals in the last 12 months. So even the people that have done one to three deals in the last 12 months, you're still going to struggle. You're still going to need to learn different technologies in order to survive the global pandemic. Real estate agents that were doing one deal a month are going to have to figure out a solution. You can't say, oh, my God, I need this SBA loan, the, the idle loan. Oh, I need that 10 grand to help me. Then you found out 10 grand wound up being one grand, which maybe we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, but what you thought was going to help you survive is no longer available. So you need to figure it out yourself. And you have a great team like this that are here to help guide you. So uh, you that poll is really cool. All right, Kevin, virtual open houses and inspections. Now that we, uh, you know, we people are not going to want to go to an open house. We're not going to want to be tracing people through houses. Um, how are we going to deal with this? Who would want to? <laughs> who would want to go inside a house right now in a house that you don't know who's in there? You know, it, uh, uh, recently, uh, you know, I, I mean, you saw a couple of months ago, my, my grandmother passed away. So so I was the executor of the estate. So we've been working on getting our house sold. And, um, you know, so I, I saw it from the real estate agent side about a lot of things that we were able to do to market the house properly. So, you know, this came at great timing because I just went through this whole process. Now, full disclosure, I've had a uh, real estate license. I've had a real estate broker's license for many years. Um, I had a real estate broker's license before I had my title company. And I hang it with Charles Rutenberg Realty, uh, which you know, obviously, you know, you guys have your license there. I'm a non-competing broker with yep. them. So I help broker the agents, add value, and, uh, you know, earn the opportunity to get their title work for the last 14 years. And one of the things that I learned going through this process is, you know, we need to do things a little bit differently. We need to to take things now virtually. And I'll tell you, I invested a lot of money in doing a, um, a virtual tour of the house. I hired a very nice guy, came in, did this whole virtual tour. You were pretty much able to walk from the front door of the house through every room, up, down, left, right. The home sold and guess how long? Three hours. Six hours. Six hours. The first agent called, said, we love the house. We want to go see it. They put in... Uh, and above asking price, you know, say price offer. So you, just you, from, 
you listed it too low. No, listed it too low. You know, <laughs> listen, possibly, or we just listed it right and, and provided Correct. the technology for some. Now, this was pre-global pandemic, but, you know, now we're talking about global pandemic and what do you do? So we're talking about virtual open houses and how do you walk your clients in the house via Zoom? I will tell you, since the pandemic, the home inspector went, did the inspection in the house and utilized Zoom technology to show the buyer the things in the house that they found good, bad, ugly, different, whatever the case may be. The appraiser went to the house for the bank because the buyer is getting a loan and did the same thing. Got the buyer on Zoom and was able to walk them through the house and show them everything that added to the value of the property to justify yeah. the price. So what you know when you're talking about how do you do things different? Well, for sure you don't want to walk in that house with a seller that was maybe just online. It's funny, right? Right outside our office on right on commercial, there was line was wrapped from from our office all the way around by the executive airport and all the way back around to commercial. For, I guess they opened up a testing site at the church right here. Do you want to walk through a house with a seller that was just online at that testing site? Absolutely not. <laughs> You know, so so you need to be careful in these times and, and you need to learn, like, what do you do different in order to adapt to the market? So virtual open houses and inspections, you know, for and I'll tell you, this is this is nothing new, really. I mean, Anish and I had a, a company two years ago. And if you remember that company that they, they basically take a camera, they go through the entire house and then you get these headset goggles that you can put on. And you can literally be standing anywhere, and when you turn your head, you can literally look 360 into the kitchen, the master bathroom, like like all of these things. And of course, you know, Anish and I were like, okay, yeah, this four thousand dollar piece of equipment is something that we don't really need right now um, because we don't need to do that with our with our open houses. Usually, if Anish and I do a rehab, we sell our houses pretty quickly. So. But, you know, you guys as real estate agents and, and, you know, if you're rehabbers that are doing a lot of properties, this kind of technology now is something, you know, to pay attention to. Compass Realty, um, Anish and I were invited to uh, Compass Realty in New York. Uh, I think that was about two years ago as well. We did the, the com, um, combined for the NFL players. Anish and I were teaching NFL players. But uh, Compass Realty, one of the things that they kind of have a stranglehold on is, is changes in new technology. Um, and all of these, you know, things we've seen on Shark Tank, all of these, you know, door lock technologies and things. Now we don't need lock boxes anymore. Um, you know, so there's there is the technology. It has been out there. Now it just needs to be applied in this way. So again, we talked about being there first. So you guys that are real estate agents, you know, if it was me, I'd be trying to get my virtual game completely to the top right now. I would I would even be considering that we're never getting out of this quarantine, and that I'm going to be selling every house virtually. Because if you are that that forerunning person, you know, in your market uh, that's doing that, and you're the go-to person, um, then you know that's going to give you an edge. Listen, so. it comes down to what we said early. How do you market your business different? I hope I never have to do another face-to-face -face closing. If we can get oh, everything man. To go virtually, oh, Kevin, yeah, you love seeing me in the office. <laughs> I do, but you know, it, the technology. You know, we're going to talk about it. So I don't want to spill the beans on the technology as to why I feel. Remote closings are even safer than face-to-face. -face. Forget about the health reasons. But a little shameless, can, can I promote one quick yeah. thing here? So just Absolutely. a little promotion for, I mean, we have over 100 people on here. If you follow our Facebook page, we're going live on Friday, as long as our technology works, with someone that does these goggle virtual tours we're having on our, as a guest on our, our call on Friday. So uh, if you want to see that technology... It's uh, great stuff. Hey, Kevin, uh, what do you know what the charge was for um, that virtual tour that you did for your grandma's, give or take? Um, People were, uh, I just had a question. I think $150. So, I mean, it's not going to break the bank. That The point is. No, you know, and it's photos, too. So they did like the the whatever, 40 plus uh, photos for the, the MLS as well. So they did all the professional photos and the virtual tour. So. And, and think about this way, guys, too. I mean, you, you still have a little bit of a budget. You're out there buying balloons and putting the signs out, and you're buying food and beverages and things for people when they come there. And as a real estate agent, if, if you're a top agent and you're sitting in a house all day doing an open house, um, you know, you're, you're taking time away from possibly getting some other leads. So this is going to also open up the opportunity to say, great, I've got an 
open house. I just, you know, went there one time. I did my virtual tour. I've got it now on film. I've got the video of it. And now anybody that wants to see the house can see it anytime. Uh, and now, and now as the agent, you can go on and, and start looking, you know, working on some other leads. Too. The thing Same is job. people forgot they, you know, in, in the heyday, all they did was they put property on the MLS and great, you know, they, they wound up selling a property. You put one photo, which was probably from the old MLS and you put it on the MLS and demand was so high and, and the property sold. But the thing is, if you do it properly and you stage the house properly and you take professional photos, light and bright and use your lighting and you make it, you make it an environment that someone's going to want to walk through that house and put a contract. And the people were like, wow, I thought you professionally staged this house. I'm like, no, we just opened the windows and took <laughs> nice photos and, and cleaned it up. We just made it look nice. We didn't put furniture and all that. It was what was existing. Um, so, you know, it definitely makes sense to, to have it professionally done. 100%. Now, screening clients. Yeah, I mean, you know, being a, being a firefighter for years, you know, obviously I, I have a love for that industry, firefighters, police officers. I have uh, my best friends, uh, a police officer. And, you know, you just hear about all of the unfortunate issues that happen when people put uh, desperate people into their house. They don't get their photo ID. I can never understand how a real estate agent gets a phone call to show a property and they go show it. You can just Google all of the news stories about people that, that get harmed and they get um, many different crimes happen. We're not going to start announcing them on here of what happens to real estate agents. Uh, but self-defense is important. We were actually having on March 25th, a self-defense class that we stopped obviously due to the pandemic. Uh, but it was a, a, a class talking about how do you protect yourself? So we talk about screening clients. Why? Because you want to make sure A, they're a real buyer, B, that they actually exist. They, they kind of look somewhat normal. Uh, and, and they're not crazy finding people from Craigslist. I saw another investor posted on social media that someone was listing his property that he had for sale for rent on Craigslist. So if you're yep. an investor or something, you know, who knows who's going to show up at your house? So, you know, Zoom is now a great method to be able to do kind of a little buyer or seller interview prior to even going to see the client. Hop on a Zoom call, get to feel them a little bit, get to know who they are, what they're about have your questions available. Um, when we talk about the online notarization, that's even another um, option for you to kind of uh, screen them a little bit. And we'll talk about that, but there's a little bit of a security check and, and we verify their identification. So you may even have a screening questionnaire for them to fill out with an mm -hmm. online notary and, and get that document done. So this way we kind of capture their information. I'll talk about the technology when we get to that part. Uh, you know, so screening clients now more than ever is important. You're not going to get, you know, their blood type, but you want to make sure who are you putting in your car? Who are you meeting at a property to make sure you're safe? That's the hey, important. Hey, Kevin, I, I do have a question. Uh, do you know the company? Someone's asking uh, what was the virtual company? I, I do. Um, let me. Yes. So okay. let me just, I'm, I'm just going to bring up, so if you don't mind me, I'm just going to yep. look on my other screen while you're talking and let me try yeah. and get the information. Yeah, while, while Kevin's looking for that information, I'll just let you guys know, last Friday on the National RIA call, um, we had um, the owner of Rent Perfect. Rent Perfect is a provider, is one of the corporate members of National RIA. Um, and just so if you guys don't know either, um, Kevin and Independence Title is an is a corporate member of RIA and MV RIA. So, <clears throat> what the owner of Rent Perfect was telling us is he had a, a quick story that um, they were doing a, a virtual screening, and uh, someone had a property manager had um, sent someone to a property uh, to go and take a look at it, and they were ready to to you know sign the, the paperwork and everything else, and the the owner of the property. They had some concerns because they said that the, the, the potential tenant um, was not able to answer certain key questions, um, basically, you know, due to or that the questions were about, you know, their address and, and you know, their identity. Uh, so they were kind of skeptical a little bit about it. They got Rep Perfect involved. Rep Perfect ran a quick check. Um, they specialize in screening um, of new tenants um, and uh, come to find out. He compared the actual pictures of the person that showed up at the property and the pictures of the person it was supposed to be, and they were not even near the same person, so they knew it was fraudulent. 
So they actually found out, and um, and the people think, you know, thank goodness, never um, never rented the the property. But you have these situations that come up all the time. So um, when you have uh, companies like Rent Perfect, there are a lot of national companies that do and provide services like this uh, for us as property owners, as as you know, people that are renting out properties. Um, you know, to, in order to be, to be able to screen your clients. So just be aware that anytime there's a situation like this and a, and a, and a change, you're going to see, I just, just with Kevin, I've seen now um, two Craigslist um, uh, fraudulent alerts. And, you know, people are, um, there are, are certain people that in society that when situations like this come up, they're looking for opportunity of how to defraud you. Yeah, and I put uh, the information in the chat for the person. It was actually $200. Um, so it was fifty dollars more than I thought, but two hundred dollars and still well worth every penny spent. Yep, and and since Ryan was actually talking about you know rent perfect, I know some of you guys are actually members of our organization. Um, there are a lot of other benefits out there, including Home Depot, Rent Perfect, Office Depot. So I'm just going to put a quick poll on there. If you know if you guys are uh, interested in learning more about our membership, so you know go ahead and answer the poll while we're still chatting. Yeah, while you guys are filling out the poll, the idea is this, is that the Broward Real Estate and Miami-Dade Real Estate Investors Associations are the only chapters in South Florida of the National Real Estate Investors Association. We pay a very large membership fee. Um, we are audited every single year. All of our programs are educational. They want to know who our corporate members are, like Independence Title. And, um, and so we, you know, they vet every single club. So just be careful, first of all, if you're doing business with any type of real estate investors association, make sure that they are affiliated with national because that's the only regulating body that would regulate how they do their business. Otherwise, they could just do their business any way they want. And we know there's a lot of fraud in real estate, so be very careful. But the idea is, is that because you are a member of RIA or MB RIA, if you're a member of our organizations, then the national RIA benefits automatically get extended to you um, uh, for free. So, you know, like Anish said, we have, you know, companies like Rep Perfect, we have Home Depot program, 2% cash back, 20 to 30% off of um, paint. Uh, there's appliance packages, there's cabinetries, um, and the 2% cash back, Anish, our members spent, what'd you say? Nine uh, our members, yeah, our members uh, at RIA spent close to $9 million last year. Uh, nationally, between all the organizations, we did $1.8 billion. Um, so yeah, we're talking about some big numbers, and that's not including the paint uh, uh, portion which you get right on top. So these are all, all important things. The other question I got, how much is our membership? Our individual membership is $249 for the year. So you do get all those national RIA benefits. We definitely have different seminars where um, there's member pricing, non-member pricing. Once we go back to live events, our members get to come in for free for our monthly meeting. So um, basically, if you're actually using you know, the membership, uh, you, 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 know, you should recoup plus uh, put some money in your pocket too. So. Oh, 100%. As, as you know, president of National RIA, my, my board members still kind of tease us because you know, they've been telling Anish and I that we are – uh, on the low end, meaning that that we have one of the lowest prices of our memberships to our organizations, and we are also two of the largest RIAs in the entire country. So take advantage of it now before we raise our prices. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, and, we'll, and what we'll do is uh, afterwards, you know, um, if you ever want, and we'll give you our information. So if you want to know more about our membership, um, the benefits, you know, we'll gladly talk to you about that. Too. I think so. the best part of membership, and I, I talk about this at, at all the events I go to, is that you get the access to people such as me uh, and other vendors that are, are trusted and the go-to people where if you were to call the office and just want to come in and sit down, it wouldn't be as easy to be able to schedule an appointment uh, as it would be if you see me at the table at, at the Bria event or you come to the boot camp and you literally get to sit there and pick my brain where I don't allow that if you were to just call the office to come in and do that uh, because it happens every day. People call all day long. So, you know, you're getting the the 15 or 20 years of experience times 10, 15 vendors that are their go-to people. That alone is worth the, the two, $300 a year. So, yeah. and, and the other, the other uh, benefit, uh, equity trust uh, that we use them for our self-directed IRIS. Uh, we're actually doing a deal right now, a probate deal that Kevin's at office is handling. And Ryan and I are actually buying it in our Roth IRA. So one of the cool things is that, A, it's gonna be tax-free, but 
the cooler thing for me was Amber on Kevin's team has worked with equity trust so many times that she's like, oh yeah, this is going to be easy. So, you know, the better you get at this, having the right partner, it makes your life easier. And, and, I, and I just, I don't know if you know about the, you know, Amber has been, has been a superstar working on this deal and, and, and really making it painless for Ryan and I. So awesome. Which, yeah, great to hear. Yeah. Listen, I mean, you know, when we talk about it, you want to look at it and not use a title company that's closing two, three, four deals a month because yeah. they haven't seen everything. They, they don't know how to adapt to COVID-19. They don't know how to adapt to a market crash. They don't know how to adapt to different ways of buying and selling real estate and transactional funding and using uh, self-directed IRAs to, to get you know tax deferred property. They just don't understand it. So you wanna make sure you're using people like my company or others that are, there's plenty of title companies that do deals. Just make sure you're using one that has the experience. Like if you came to me with a short sale you know, Ryan and Anish do a lot of short sales and they use another title company for them because we don't specialize in short sales. We focus on wholesale deals, lower priced, large volume of deals where some of the other title companies are able to negotiate short sales and, and it's just what they're good at. And, uh, you know, so you need to ask questions and make sure you're doing business with people that you know, like and trust, but have experience in that side of the topic uh, that, that, you know, you're trying to work on. Yep. And we don't do short sales and independence, but all of our probates and wholesale deals and everything else yeah. goes through independence title for sure. Uh, so Kevin, how are we going to close these deals during the COVID-19? You want to talk a little bit about some of the adaption that you guys have made and how we're getting these closings done? Yeah, absolutely. And we're going to talk about it in another couple of minutes on, I think, the next slide of the slide after when we talk about remote notarization. Uh, for those of you that are watching, the, the state of Florida did pass the statute uh, as of January 1st to allow what's called remote online notarization, which we will talk about and get into more in depth. But that basically means that instead of sitting face to face with a notary, we're able to do it on a similar platform to Zoom, uh, which is you know obviously a lot more secured. Um, but, but how do you close a deal and make it the new norm? So you know we start from getting a contract executed. You're using DocuSign or as a, another type of electronic signing platform. It's very, very important. You do not need to be face to face. You can do these platforms and be able to uh, sign documents remotely and walk people through the closing. We can send notaries to the house and they look in the window and watch them sign as the documents are explained to them and then they notarize them. There's drive through closings. You can come up to our office and close. You can't get in our office, but you can come up and close at a, at a, um, uh, a folding table out front. You know, we'll put table and chairs, we disinfect it, and you can come and close. We just don't allow people in our office. So how to close a deal? Easily. We can close it. You just need to make sure there's a company that can adapt. We had an attorney call us yesterday and was arguing because he wanted to bring his uh, client into the office, his seller into the office to close the deal. And we're like, absolutely not. He's like, why not? I, I have a long drive from Miami. I'm like, especially not from Miami. We're not letting people in. They have the most cases in Florida. So, you <laughs> Hey, know, man, watch that. I'm in Miami right uh, now. <laughs> but we're just not doing it. We need the safety and well-being of, of our, our clients. You know, we had an employee that had a little bit of a cold. Stay home for a week, you know, where normally that person would come into the office. So we're doing everything we can to be cautious to make sure we can close as many deals as possible. Um, so there are many ways in order to be able to close a deal. And when we talk about remote online notarization, it doesn't change for us. We've been doing that for quite some time. It's just you watching have not been doing it via technology. You haven't been using DocuSign and remote notarization and e-recording and things like that. We've been doing it. We've been using e-recording <laughs> since 2013, where everyone's trying to figure out how to do it now. You know, there were about 10 counties in the state of Florida that were not on electronic notarization. Imagine they're all on it now. So go figure. <laughs> Somehow they figured out this. Co so COVID-19, besides the downturn in, in, in a little bit of business, which we're able to survive because we've planned properly for it, this was a blessing for our industry. It taught us so much of how we adapt and get others to adapt to the changing technology. So we can close yeah. a deal now more than ever using technology, and it's great. Yeah. Hey, Ke uh, Kevin, just a quick question. I got someone asked me about what do you charge for uh, title and lien searches for like preliminary? Do well, you do we don't that? Just or? do preliminary because those are probably yeah. someone asking a question that's buying at the courthouse. 
We only pull title and lien searches if we are doing the closing. If you want a resource, we do have our guest from yesterday. You can actually look up on our Facebook page. Yesterday, we had clear choice tax and lien search. They can pull preliminary title data and they can do preliminary uh, lien searches. You would just set up an account and pay them directly. We only get involved in the deal if we're doing an actual closing because those expenses are invoice. So we'll charge invoice for a title search and a lien search. We don't make any money from it where some of these other title companies upcharge their lien search and title search. So it's actually a revenue stream for them. We don't, right. we just charge costs. So uh, check out our right. Facebook page. That information is on there. Also, uh, I have just uh, another question for uh, general, just so you guys know, I know we talked about our memberships. Our membership, if you become a member, it's the Miami Dade RIA. It is not the Dade RIA. So we're separate organizations. Your membership works for RIA and Miami Dade RIA. Um, again, we're the only approved chapter in Dade County. So yes, we are not DRIA, the Dade Real Estate Investor Association. Different. If you look at our logo, MD RIA. And also, um, do you need to be a real estate agent to enter the RIA? Um, no, you do not need to be a real estate agent to enter the RIA. As a matter of fact, a lot of our members and a lot of our students that are flipping properties are not real estate agents. You do not have to be a real estate agent to be in real estate. Um, and then there was another question too that said, will joining a RIA um, assist me in getting deals? Well, of course, guys, because think about it this way. You know, it's the people around you. When you join the Broward or Miami-Dade Real Estate Investors Association, guess what? You get to talk to people like Kevin Thatcher of Independence Title and his team. You get to have Anish and I, you know, refer you to, you know, contractors and flooring people and hard money lenders and those kind of things. So, you know, joining an organization uh, like this can only help and support your real estate business. That's the best um, benefit. The best benefit is, is having the resource of people. Yep. So what are our COVID-19 tools of the trade now? This is going to be something new. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, in one sense, there are a lot of people that that were utilizing these tools and have been very successful at it. So we'll talk about as a realtor or a, an investor, you know, doing virtual inspections are very, very important. A lot of the inspectors are now starting to do virtual inspections, whether it's via Zoom or they have their own software. DocuSign is very, very important. Uh, you know, you know, when we talk about Zoom, you look, I just saw a webinar I was on last night. One of my uh, virtual mentors was saying, the owner of Zoom made $4 billion, not the price of the stock, the profit, the net profit was $4 billion from COVID-19. You think, and I don't know how true that is, we'd have to fact check it, but it makes sense that everyone switched to these Zoom type platforms. So, you know, you're gonna use DocuSign, you're gonna use Zoom, you're gonna use virtual tours, you're gonna use online remote notarization, you're gonna use electronic recording. Uh, you know, these are the, the, the tools of, virtual world you know think about it if you were utilizing someone you know a lot of people know uh you know we've used virtual assistants for some time and they're like well they, they may be overseas and i'm like you wouldn't know the difference if they're overseas or they're sitting in the next cubicle because all of our software is virtual we have a uh, voice over ip telephones and and computer systems and and we use all of the the tools of the trade so if these large companies like microsoft and google are all doing it why can't you being the solepreneur right we don't call you the entrepreneur you may not have a business you're the solepreneur you're just you and it's you and your business and you need to adapt to some of the tools of the trade you know we're using a program called Streamyard, which is basically for those of you that are watching on this webinar you could also be watching on our facebook page and and our our youtube channel because these types of events are streamed so we stream so you're looking for uh, video streaming tools as well. So it's about how do you adapt and, and take these tools and, and be a problem solver. So, you know, we mentioned lots of them here. A lot of them have a cost to them. Some of them are free, uh, you know, as long as they're not custom branded to you, but you can use DocuSign, electronic notarization, streaming apps, social media, and you can take your business to the next level regardless of the COVID-19 or not. Because whether it's COVID-19 or it's going to be the market correction uh, of 2021 or 2022 or, or on, we don't really know. But when that market correction comes, setting yourself apart from the competition, learning from COVID-19 and suffering through it and coming out on top of your game is going to teach you when that market correction happens. Absolutely. 
Yeah. Anish, is there any questions that popped up? Yeah, just a couple. Kevin, actually, a lot of people are asking about your your uh, information, how to get a hold of you. Facebook. We got that, Facebook. The, the last slide, guys, the last slide is going to have okay. all the contact information for both of us. So if you guys just wait to the end, there's phone numbers and emails for us as well. Awesome. Yep. All right. Okay. Remote online notarization technology. Kevin started talking a little bit about this. So... This was just passed recently, right? Yeah, so the law the law for, for me to be able to be the remote notary via video conference and do the closing with you, the buyer or the seller, was just passed in January. So now everybody is hopping on the bandwagon to become in Florida what's called a RON, R-O-N. You see remote online notarization. It's short for, uh, RON is short for remote online notarization. So to become a RON signing agent, Everyone is running to do it now. The reality is, is us as a title company, we're the first title company in the entire state of Florida to be RON approved, to be able to do a RON closing. Now, everyone's saying, well, how were you able to do it before everyone else? It's because we were utilizing the same technology, but with a Virginia notary that approved remote online notarization. So instead of sitting with me as the title company, you're sitting with our closer that is sitting in Virginia doing remote online notarization. Our underwriter, which is a nationally recognized underwriter, was the first underwriter to spearhead the program of saying, we will accept remote online notarization closings in the state of Florida. And Kevin Thatcher being our uh, one of our top five title companies in the state, you are the first one to be approved to do it. So we've been doing that January 2018, we were approved to do it. So this wasn't anything new for us. We're just now able to physically do the remote online notarization ourselves. So let's talk about what is it? So think about when you sit with a closer and you hand them your identification, does the notary even look at your ID to see it's you? <laughs> I don't know, maybe, maybe not. Did, what fact checks do they do to make sure you didn't find that ID out on the street or duplicate it or print it? On, on a home printer. You know, what are they really doing to make sure that that's actually you? Does it look like you? Was it 85 pounds heavier? Was it <laughs> 10 years ago? You know, did you have hair? Now you don't have hair? Hey, 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 hey. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but that's the whole idea. So when we talk about remote online notarization, this is a technology security-based platform, similar to like if you were to apply for a credit card online, they're gonna ask you, some fact check security questions like what type of car out of these four did you have which they're getting from what's called the soft pull on your credit report what street did you maybe live on out of these three and it may be three or none of the above so you're going to look at them and be like oh i lived on that street so after you go through a series of fact checks you must be a u.s citizen or a, a u.s resident with a credit history because we're pulling soft credit and you must be in the United States of America. So you cannot be overseas. You cannot be a, a foreign national. You must be a US citizen or a resident alien. You must have a, a social security number with about a three to five year credit history. You go through the security checks. Then you enter the, the virtual closing room where we have on the call the notary, the person signing, and any witnesses that are required for the document. So if it's a deed, we'll have one witness in the room with us and we are going to remote sign these documents similar to DocuSign, but a lot more secure because I would trust in, in court my video showing you signing than a notary who may or may not even still be alive or may or not be able to be reached to do a, an affidavit stating that you remember this closing from five years ago. What's going to happen now moving forward is when these foreclosures happen and they subpoena the records, we're going to walk into the courthouse with the actual video showing you signing and that you were approved. So if anything, this is changing the game and the landscape of closings to make it much more secure. Who loves it? Title companies. Who hates it? Attorneys. They poke holes in everything. You know, they're poking holes that it may not be valid. How do you really know? And now they're starting to get on board. The one caveat... Oh, so I was just going to say, Kevin, not to cut you off, you know what's interesting about that, attorneys not liking that. You know what attorneys have been doing for years in depositions? They've been using video depositions as basically saying, okay, this person said this, like instead of them signing something, 
they're getting the you know the video of it. So I'm I'm, yeah. I'm curious as to why attorneys would have an issue with that. I mean, they're just talking about the validity of the the non wet sign documents, the non wet sign stuff. You know, but right. now since the law passed, now they're all getting on board because they realize now more than ever they're not going to be able to close deals without it. Um, so you know, it's very very important. But imagine walking into a foreclosure where you say I didn't sign those documents. And you have a video saying you did. How would I know who signed a document? I mean, yes, if I have their ID in my file and it's my signature, I can I can assume that that was me. But imagine if you have a video to actually prove you were sitting there. <laughs> it is so powerful. So I love yeah. it. I, I just want to tell you a funny story. Was uh, about a week and a half ago we closed on a deal, and I did use the notary, you know, the, the technology uh, with, with the notary. Um, you know, obviously being at home. Uh, I didn't realize they didn't warn me that there'd be a video. So all of a sudden it clicks on, I had to run and put on a shirt. So right. just make sure you're dressed. <laughs> In case it does have to go to court, the last thing you want is a video. At least yeah. the last thing I want a video is uh, me without a shirt trying to sign. Yeah, but the technology <laughs> platform is, is a game changer, which is why I said earlier, you know, I hope they all go online because it's just safer. The, but what I was saying is, so the one caveat is if there are realtors or, or lenders watching, a lot of the lenders, the conventional Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac lenders are not on board with this technology. There's very few. They're starting to because until COVID-19, they didn't have a reason to. So they are starting to, but a lot are not. We had another question that um, are banks accepting electronic signatures? And the question was more posed towards short sales. But Kevin, let me ask you this. Aside from short sales, when it comes to you know satisfaction of mortgages and things like that, um, banks have been accepting electronic signatures on that, that type of document. Yeah, any document that needs to be legally notarized in the state of Florida uh, may be used via notary. I will tell you the lenders representing, let's say, a buyer, a conventional lender, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, or even the mortgage brokers, whoever they do their loan through, those lenders are not comfortable with that platform to sign the full buyer's loan package, although some of them are doing, like I know Guaranteed Rate does a lot of online you sign basically like three quarters of that, uh, you know, 200 page package online. And then they only send a small portion uh, to the actual closing table to be wet signed. And they're even spearheading the technology. They're allowing uh, non cash out refinances right now to be done via remote online notarization. Uh, so yeah. our underwriting rep sent to us the other day asking what lenders do you see doing? And I'm like, slow down. We don't want to start getting them on the platform yet because they don't know how to do it. We need to wait for them to catch up with everyone else. Now we had, um, you know, Anish and I have done hundreds of short sales. And I remember, you know, in 2019, we started using a lot of electronic signatures on things, uh, especially when you have homeowners that, you know, they, they don't have a printer at home. They don't have a scanner to try to scan out documentation and things like this, whether it's a contract or an addendum or a listing agreement. So we've been using electronic signatures on short sales for a while. We have had a couple documents that came back and if you happen to remember any specific mortgage servicers or banks that had an issue with any, you know what? I, I, we go through so many of them. Yeah. It's hard to remember. And, and the funny like part is, a couple of times, but yeah, it, it doesn't happen too often. Um, but I think right now with, with all the, the pandemic, we haven't had any issues at all. They're all yeah, I'm sure. I can tell you that the banks that think about it this way, the banks, at least in my opinion, um, we probably should have put up one of those um, slides in the beginning. We are not attorneys. This is not yeah. to be construed as legal advice or anything <laughs> like that. Uh, our disclaimer. Uh, but uh, but I can tell you this: that that you know banks are definitely going to be wanting to get these properties off their books before the end of this year because you know the banks are hurting as well right now too. We are, our hopes is that. The reaction from the banks is that they're going to be more accepting of short sales. They're going to run the short sales through faster. They're not going to come back at the ridiculous high, you know, prices that they were at before. Um, because again, a lot of the, the short sales that Anish and I do, we find out in the end that the owner on that mortgage and, and note um, is actually part of our, a, a REIT, which is a, a large, a larger group um, or even a hedge fund that um, owns, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars worth of mortgages. And, you know, they're going to make large movements. They don't look at each individual short sale. They're going to be looking in broad strokes and saying, okay, we need to get rid of this stuff because guess what? They're going to want to buy more properties. They need cash to do that. So they need to get rid of some of these mortgages, get rid of these non-performing, 
um, you know, and do these short sales. So I think they're, they're going to be very adaptive to what needs to get done in order to get the short sale done. And a lot of it's because they don't know. You know, there was something with uh, lenders where we used to have to physically type the word ISAOA on the title policies, which stands for its successors and or assigns. And that law changed a long time ago when we adopted the 2006 uh, title policy jacket, which didn't come until a few years later. Um, but still to this day, they're like, type ISAOA on here. And I'm like, guys. And, and sometimes it's easy for me to open it and just type it on with, with our PDF typer. But I'm like, I, sometimes I want to just argue with them and prove to them they're wrong. Like, it's just because that's what you were taught. And you were taught something. You have to just learn to adapt. It's not always the way you were taught. It's not always the way you were taught by your parents. You go to college and you leave college and you get a job. Like, there's other opportunities if you happen to be that go-getter. Me, personally, I didn't want to go to college. I hated school. And if it wasn't for, for my high school teacher taking me under his wing uh, and, and basically helping me through it, I probably wouldn't have made it through high school. You know, so, so it's just not for everybody. You need to learn to adapt to what's going on. So COVID-19 shouldn't be a disaster. It should be an opportunity for you to shine and excel and grow, even if you lost your job. Maybe that's telling you something about yeah. getting with these guys and learning how to wholesale real estate, because now more than ever, we're entering the correction and it's gonna be a longer opportunity for us because we're gonna have COVID, then the election, and then a market correction, which is just due at some point. Whether it's next yeah. year, the year after, the year after that, it's coming. Yeah. Now, speaking of getting documentation signed, I can tell you guys that the first place that I even heard of the COVID-19 addendum was Kevin Thatcher Independence Title. <laughs> you had to be one of the first guys on this thing. Um, so tell us about this addendum and uh, what's it all about? Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, I mean, a lot of our partners, uh, you know, as we spoke about earlier, you know, you're with, with Charles Rotenberg Realty and, and their large network um, being merged with, uh, you, you know, United uh, real estate group out in uh, Texas, you know, they, they're on the forefront. They speak on a lot of these boards. They were on the forefront of getting this information as quick as possible out to uh, their agents, which obviously extend to our family as well, because, you know, we're always helping them. So there is a COVID-19 addendum. This is what it looks like. It may hide in the, in the green screen, um, but there is an addendum. And it's just basically to protect all parties. It's to protect all parties just in case, you know, things were to come up. So it talks about the closing date and about extending the closing date due to things that happened due from COVID-19. Now, most of you are just asking, well, doesn't the force majeure uh, clause? I'm not an attorney giving you legal advice, but I will tell mm -hmm. you there's two sides to every story. Some attorneys say if you were to go to court, the force majeure would, would, would qualify um, as an act of, of terrorism, an act of war, an act of God. I don't know, does it? Does a global pandemic necessarily? Um, you losing your job, does that qualify for you to get out of the contract? Well, maybe if you don't qualify for your loan. So what I try and tell people, and they always ask, and I speak about this at your boot camp, is they're like, well, I just want to write a contract. They're going to write a contract on a little post-it note like this. I said, I don't care. You could write a contract on a paper napkin. And we can close the deal. But if and when something goes sideways and you need to go back to something, that's when you're going to have a problem. So, you know, there's a lot of clauses in here. We don't have time to go through each one, but it talks about closing date, the financing period, if it needs to be extended due to not being able to get an appraisal, maybe. You know, we've been on the forefront of the uh, people saying, you know, the all of the uh, mayors and governors and 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 city officials talking about who's it mandatory, not mandatory. Realtors were not allowed to operate in the city of Coral Springs. Title companies were mandated to be closed. You know, so we were fighting all of this. And now, as you know, if you've been watching the news, realtors can operate. They have to follow proper CDC guidelines, maintain social distancing. Appraisers and inspectors can do the same thing. But this COVID addendum came out before appraisers were allowed to go appraise properties and inspectors were allowed to inspect properties. Now they're allowed to. So kind of the COVID addendum may not necessarily apply now because we've all been put in as essential businesses. Um, but you do want to use it in order to protect both parties for a delay in closing. You know, when we talk about the force majeure contract, that's talking, that's more of an act of God, like a hurricane. And you're not able to bind insurance that the lender requires in order to close. 
And as I said, attorneys can speak more on it and you're going to find two sides to every story. But when a contract dispute comes up for a $2,000 deposit, are you really going to hire an attorney and go to court? Probably not. So you're going to wind up negotiating to split that deposit just to make it go away. So if you use the, the contract addendum, it just gives you more power for both sides to protect the interest of what's going on you know, with this global pandemic. The same as using the 12 page as is contract, which realtors get access to investors. I know I saw you put the link there for the uh, I think it's off the star. You can get the license to mm -hmm. use the contract. So, you know, yeah. there's a reason we tell you to use the 12 page contract versus that uh, wholesaling, you know, properties class that you took with your um with with that coach in utah that's telling you use this one page addendum mm -hmm. that they use in every state across the country there's a reason the florida realtors and the florida bar drafted a 12-page contract to protect all parties it's not just to protect one side and for those of you that want a little bit more about how to fill out the contract we do have a 20-minute tutorial on our website that talks about how to fill out the contract properly it'll walk you through it but you know, this addendum is important to use now more than ever until we get through it and everything opens back up, you might as well use it. It can't hurt, it can only help. It's not gonna harm you, it's just gonna help you. Yep, absolutely. Um, and there's any questions that uh, have come in we wanna cover real quick? Um, no, there's some, more, some of you, I know some of you guys are have really specific questions, so I'm actually helping you out. Um, answering you guys directly. Um, we do have uh, some people asking if uh, if we could get a copy of that addendum. Yeah, if they uh, email me, uh, if they email me, uh, Kevin at titlerate.com, I'll be happy to send you the link to the addendum that was sent to us. Uh, if you want the video, you can email me as well. I think the website is smartcontractsfl.com, uh, but you can look at our YouTube channel. We have almost 200 videos on there. Uh, that talk about how to fill out the contract, everything of, of everything in, in real estate, which thank you, Ryan, by the way, we got that from you because you used to do uh, Get Your Move in Mondays and we started doing Title Tuesdays. So we do have a ton of videos on there uh, for you. You know, they always say you want to mirror image those that are successful. So, you know, if, if I mirror image Ryan to be more successful, you want to join the Broward Rhea to be more successful. Mirror image and duplicate what everyone else is doing. No one is going to worry. I talk to title companies all the time about how they're doing business and we, we talk together because there's enough business for everyone. We're not competing with each other. There's enough market share for everyone. When other title companies show up at their meeting, I welcome them. I talk to them. We have conversations because what their focus on business isn't my focus on business. They may charge higher fees, do less deals. We charge lower fees and do wholesale deals. So, you know, just a different side of the business. So reach out to me, any questions, shoot me a message on social media. Um, we have an auto bot on our Facebook page for independence title. It'll get you a lot of this information. Um, so you can talk to the auto bot. Uh, so just look out for all of that stuff. And today we're going live 3 p.m. with another one of your um, uh, members, one of your corporate members. So just just follow us. And we're, we're here to provide added value. You know, again, as I started, I was a firefighter. I get in the deal together and I leave the deal together. So I want to make sure we get in, get out, get paid together, not alone. Because if I get out, Without you, if you don't get paid, I don't get paid. So, there's another question on here too. Um, do you have a list of different COVID-19 rules regarding the appraisers, inspectors, agents, and so forth? We talked about this on the national RIA call. So, guys, there's no laws that have been put, you know, in place for these kinds of things. But as far as the rules go, it's the social distancing rules. If an appraiser is going to go to a property, they're most likely that appraiser is going to ask that if someone is living in the property that they are not inside the property while they're doing their appraisal. Um, we had a student actually go uh, two days ago to take uh, pictures of the property and the owner of the property, they weren't living in it at the time, but they met them there, but they stayed outside so that they you know, are not within six feet of one another. Um, inspectors and, and handyman, like if there's a service uh, that's needed for like an air conditioner or something like that, Basically, what they're being educated on is when they come to the house, if they're going to service something in the kitchen or the bathroom, if it's a plumbing like issue or whatever it is, they're just going to ask that people are not in the same room at the same time. But of course, you know, these inspectors, they have to have the right, you know, mask on, they need to have rubber gloves, they need to, to go through, um, you know, the, the, the necessary steps in order to protect themselves. So there's no real 
you know, there's no real set laws or anything. You just kind of have to use common sense. And again, you kind of have to, you know, talk to your seller, talk to your buyer, talk to your inspectors, talk to your appraiser, talk to people, and, and you have to kind of work that out. Now, there is a health questionnaire that you should be getting signed, which you can probably Google to find it. So for what Ryan's talking about, you can just Google, if you're in Broward County, you know, every ordinance is different. So just Google the the COVID-19 Broward County ordinance and read through it. You know, we've been reading it. Every time a new one comes out, we read it. Uh, you know, so, but there is a health questionnaire that you get them to fill out, whether they visited certain types of countries, whether they've been feeling ill. And a lot of that is really going to be used that if you got that signed and you were to come down with COVID-19, unfortunately, they're going to ask you, who did you see? Where did you go? Who did you talk to? So you're going to want to be able to track back. Now it's not the law. You're not going to have to, but you want to be able to track back. Who did you meet with? Who did you see your family members, your friends, your business associates? Like where did they go to be able to get that spider of all of the people you were in contact with to basically alert them that you've come down with COVID-19. So you probably want to get that questionnaire filled out and keep a log. I tell people, keep a log of everyone that you've been in contact with. Um, You know, for me, it's real easy. It's my employees and, and, you know, my family and that's it. Uh, but for some people, it's not as easy. If you're out showing properties, the appraisers there, the homeowners there, just keep a log of who you're meeting. It's very important. You may or may not need it later. And I'll tell you guys this too, as a wholesaler, um, you know, addition, I have a couple of properties, um, that, you know, independence titles working on getting title work and everything done, uh, so we can get clear to close. And he and I are going to wholesale, um, both properties. And, you know, the reality is, is that, you know, I know there's this COVID-19 addendum that says basically you can get all of these extra contingencies a way to get out of the contract. Well, guess what? If we get two offers or if we get five offers or whatever, you know, whatever offers have the COVID-19 addendum are probably going to be put at the bottom of the pile because the reality is, is that I still want my zero day inspections. I want zero contingencies. I'm going to keep your deposit. If you don't close on the property, set me proof of funds. And if you've got the cash, then we've got a green light. If you don't have the cash and you're waiting on a hard money lender, that's your problem because I'm not signing the COVID-19 when I'm selling a property. Um, and, and even if I buy, you know, if I'm buying a property, Venetian and I put a wholesale deal in contract, um, you know, or if one of our students gets a motivated seller, I'm not concerned about the COVID-19 contract because first of all, we're not applying for financing. We buy properties cash. Second of all, my uh, a contingency of having my inspection days overrides anything. On a far bar as is contract, I can put 15 days inspection. If I leave it blank, it's automatically defaulted to 15 days. And if I'm only 10 days in my inspection period and we can't find a buyer, guess what? I can back out of that deal and get my deposit back without any issues. It doesn't matter if we're in a COVID pandemic or not. Now remember, this COVID addendum was basically drafted prior to us opening back up to some extent. It was also drafted uh, for more of the traditional buy-sell deals. When you talk about a closing date, the closing date's probably not going to be extended. You know, they were thinking the banks are going to shut down. The inspectors can't inspect. You can't get homeowners insurance. Insurance companies are open writing policies. The lenders are open drafting documents. The appraisers are open doing appraisals. The title companies are open doing title searches. Uh, And the only one big challenge that we are seeing, which it does talk about in here, is homeowners associations, which most investors aren't buying in, talking about being able to get the HOA approval. That's really the only clause on there that I see could potentially be a problem because everyone else is still open. But even now they are issuing, they're doing Zoom interviews and issuing certificates of approval. So I really don't think in my opinion, this pertains, uh, they were thinking more of a a global lockdown like it was in New York and the streets aren't empty here. People are working and uh, you know- The streets aren't empty, the beaches aren't empty. (laughs) People are out there surfing. I can can go out on my balcony right now and see in the ocean and see a bunch of surfers. Everyone's You know, and the reality is, is just be careful. You know, we're following a lot on the statistics of the data and how many deaths and how many new cases and where the clusters are and all this. Guys, all you need to do is you just put on a mask. You know, we have these masks we wear. Uh, We're actually getting ones with our logo done. But, but just cover up your mouth. It, it goes by human, you know, yeah. by, by coughing and sneezing. So wash your hands, keep your hand sanitizer around. We have those too. If you want one, you come pick one up. Uh, but, you know, hand sanitizer, wash your hands, wash your phone, wear a mask. And if you need to go visit a house, just put a mask on. Just cover your mouth and your nose and wash your hands well, and you're going to be okay. The percentage of deaths are very low 
in Broward County. They're very low in the state of Florida compared don't feel to other bad. areas. Yeah. And don't feel bad about not shaking people's hands and things. I've been giving the six foot elbow, you know, from, from <laughs> feet away. So. We do the foot now. Make a joke about yeah. it. We do the foot bump now. We just bump foot, feet. I don't even want to get close. Oh, I, don't even get, I don't even get that close, man. I'm, I'm still keeping my six foot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Elbows is too close. Elbows is way too close. We do the foot bump. Maybe that would be six feet. Um, but that's going to be the new norm. You know, I said if we were to open up May 1st, I think they should do federally mandated. If you're out in public, you cover your face for 60 days or you get a, a ticket like jaywalking. You know, maybe that's yeah. how we can get back to normal because the reality is until we open back up, things won't get back to normal. And the you longer never, we stay closed, the bigger the problem is going to be because we know that federal money is not being given where it needs to go. That's a whole yeah, other thing. <laughs> what I was going to add also, uh, I know uh, Kevin and uh, myself are married. My wife really didn't like the elbow thing. <laughs> I was like, hey, I'm social distancing. She wasn't thrilled about that. So uh, I don't kiss my wife. I know, I know that's a whole other topic. I don't kiss her. I kiss her on the head. She's like, oh, you don't kiss me. I'm like, no, because I don't want to even take the chance that we're spreading anything. Absolutely. Even if it's a little cold. What you guys have to look forward to when this is all over? Okay, last, last 30 seconds each. Wait, Anish, last wait, 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 wait. I got a couple, couple questions. Uh, I did say that I was going to go live with these questions. So uh, I have someone asking... Uh, do we have any idea if the market prices for home will drop? And if so, how far do you think it'll drop? And when should we start buying? Here, let me get my crystal ball out. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think so one of the things dropped a little bit. A yeah, little bit. So I don't the, think it's major. I think you're going to. It's going to drop a little bit only because the inventory is down. Some people are running scared. So, I mean, my opinion is that yes, it's going to be a little bit of a drop. And whether it comes back or it puts us right and it stays steady through the end of the year, and then it puts us into a global. Uh, downturn, we don't know. But the reality is interest rates are at an all-time low. Property values are still holding steady. And and like Ryan said, there is no crystal ball. We don't know if there was a crystal well, ball. We'd be multi-billionaires. Yeah. What, what I, I'd also add also to that is, remember, stop looking at the macroeconomics, right? You're looking at one house, one neighborhood. There's a ton of our buyers that are still buying. They're buy and hold. So they don't care. They're looking at cash flow. Right. For them, it's still a discount. While everyone else, again, is running away, this is a great time to get in. We're actually ramping up our business. Our big buyers specifically called, hey, Nish, you got anything? We're in still. You know? So maybe they're doing a little bit of a price adjustment. Absolutely. Should you be a little bit more conservative on your rehab options, um, you know, your after repair value? Yeah, be a little bit more conservative. But at the end of the day, you know, people are still buying. People still need homes. Um, so, I, I mean... I, I'm, I'm all in, obviously. We're all in and we're still buying. I know, Kevin, you said you probably did over 50 closings this past month. The investors are still buying, is, is what I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, and guys, I listen. Okay. You know, the reality is this, is that if you've got a homeowner that really wants to sell, they're motivated to sell, and you can't see the inside, you can't get showings and things, then you have to be a little bit conservative on your numbers because you have to think that the person that's going to buy it, their mindset is, is that, well, I'm buying this property side and seeing, I'm going to need a little bit of a discount. Um, but like Anish said, take it case by case. Look at the property. You know, do your analysis on it. Um, you know, we were doing ARV times 0.75 minus rehab costs. We told our students that they could start to lower that to 0.65. So ARV times 0.65 um, minus your rehab costs, and that's a starting place. It doesn't mean that you still can't offer more because in the end, when you put it in contract. If someone buys it, you make money, great. If they don't buy it, then you have your contingencies to be able to get out of that. So, And part of that yeah. to remember is just adjusting your cost is going to teach you financial safety for when this happens again. You know, one of the things that we, we talked about earlier, we were able to just turn off what, what we knew was the added extra expenses in order to get through this pandemic because we didn't know what was going to happen if we got shut down completely. So by just adjusting your expenses a little bit, it'll set you up for, for the next market cycle whenever that comes. So it's a smart, it's almost like good homework to do right now. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I just threw a quick poll. So obviously, you know, to see how many of you guys think um, the COVID-19 pandemic after it slows down, um, is it going to be time for uh, real, you know, cash real estate investors here in South Florida? Um, I'll, and I'll share the results in a uh, in a little bit. But the idea is, uh, you know, most of you guys are thinking it's a great time. It's a great time, it is. absolutely. And you should be. Everybody should be thinking this is a great time. I can tell you right now, 
that you know we already know that there is going to be a flood of homeowners facing foreclosures. Pre foreclosures are going to pop up everywhere. The banks do not care. They're not going to be sympathetic to families and people because they just lost their jobs. They want their money. Period. It's the same thing in the crash of the market. You know, people were committing suicide and everything else back in 2007 and 8. The banks don't care. So don't fool yourself thinking that, that there's going to be, you know, some type of like, oh, there's going to be a bailout. No, the money's gone. The money's being given away to corporations, to wealthy people. It's not being given to anybody to really help them. So there's going to be major opportunities in real estate. I would stake my name on it. Yeah, so I'm going to give you this. We, 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 yeah, we got it. So we got it. It was given to us. So it is being given, but very, very few. What The caveat there is bank small. If you yeah, bank so, big, you got nothing. Yeah, and, and I'm just going to give you some stats to give you an idea. So for every 10% of unemployment, that leads to about 1.5 million to 2 million people behind on their mortgages. So we're over 10%. Um, right now, I just saw something uh, from Fannie Mae. They're saying almost 3 million people are putting a stop on their payments uh, nationally. To put this in perspective, the recession and the Great Recession in 2008, it took us two years to get to 2 million people. So we've done that in 30 days. Uh -huh. So it, it kind of, you're like, whoa. Yeah. So, you know, if, if you could really understand where you're at and why it's a good time, if you're a cash buyer. Right. So I know it's all scary. I, I hate to say, you know, I remember, I know what it's feeling. Maybe you're going through it, right? You maybe lost your job. Um, Ryan and I, you know, I know Kevin, same thing. We've lost everything. And, and, you know, I, the thing I always tell everyone is if I could tell my old self back then in 2008 or 2009, Hey, everything's going to be okay. You know, not to worry so much. Keep, you know, keep hanging in there. I, I, I wish, you know, I, I could do that today because, you know, we came out of this, you know, with flying colors, we're doing better, all three of us. So that could be you. I know it, it you know, I know it feels bleak, especially if you're watching the news all day. Um, it always feels like disaster TV. Um, so, you know, the idea is to change that, that mindset of what you're feeling too. Listen, my um, wife hated me for the first two weeks of COVID-19 <laughs> because, you know, I was scared. I was scared to make sure we were going to be able to maintain payroll. Um, you know, now we don't live uh, this big lavish lifestyle, you know, so we knew we had enough to cover us, but we were like, what if we're shut down for 90 days, 120 days? You know, we were more worried. Like I couldn't sleep at night worried that we'd have to put employees out of work and have to let people go and, you know, readjust. We'd be fine, but they wouldn't be, which is very important to us to make sure, you know. So, I mean, you know, if you're scared out there, it's okay. We're all scared. We are all scared. And if you're one of the a uh, hundred plus people watching this and you email our office in and tell me you want a copy of rescue your business i will personally get you the physical copy of my book if you've stayed on this long you've earned it my office will mail out today all you have to do is say rescue your business with your name and address and we will mail you out a physical copy of my book not a pdf the physical book for you to read to see what i suffered through in in 2008 2009 i went all out and wrote about it and uh, hopefully, if you're going through some challenges, that will help you understand that you will be okay, just like the three of us are now. You're going to be speaking about it in, in three, four, five years from now, once you master this business. There you go. All right, guys. Um, well, listen, also... Wait, one last poll. poll. I got one little last poll. <laughs> <laughs> so... You know, make sure, remember, look, I see a couple of Kevin for president. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we, I know we're just kind of messing around, but, you know, uh, obviously. Uh, we got Kevin's nothing else on. to do. Well, <laughs> where, where are we going? We got nowhere else to go. We might as well mess around a little bit. You know, listen, it's all about, you know, if, if that 66% or whatever the number was of newbies are here, that means you may have lost your job. You're trying to figure it out. And there's no one better than the three of us to help teach you. So even if we went a little bit over time, I'm proud to take the time and honored to sit here and be able to educate you a little bit more because we are going to be okay. If I tell you my 10 staff members are okay, my staff members that are overseas are okay, I have friends of mine that work on cruise ships, they're okay. We are going to be okay. It's just how do we get through it and what opportunities are there when we come out on the other side uh, in a positive manner. If you watch the news, the doom and gloom, it's going to kill you.
Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and some of the things like, so, you know, Ryan and I are committed, you know, obviously through this uh, pandemic to keep working, educating. So I know some of you guys, this might be your first webinar. So we definitely want to thank you. Um, we do have text messages. So some, if you're not on our text message uh, system, again, we're not going to spam you to death. If you're like us, you probably get 100, 200 emails, 300 emails, and you forget. So we're, you know, you can opt in. It's right on the screen. Um, we do have, I think, uh, we have a couple more events coming up uh, uh, next Tuesday, actually. We're doing um, how to find big profits off market properties. Um, we have our national speaker, uh, Alan Calhill, and I, I had some questions about private lending. So we have a lot of upcoming events, too. So for us, it's, it's important that you know, you're, you're part of our organization throughout the process. And, and guys, people ask us about our events and upcoming events. It's very, very simple. Go to Bria.com, B-R-E-I-A.com, go to upcoming events, the tab at the top, and there is a calendar in there that has all of our upcoming events. You can click on them, you can get all the information, and you can find out most of the events are free, um, and uh, and you can register right online for those as well. So yeah, and for anyone putting in the chat your, your name that you want the book, that doesn't do me any good. I need, I need you to email me at the email address below, info at titlerate.com or Kevin at title rate or, or find me on, on uh, Facebook. I'm all over Facebook. Just find me there. Send me your name and email and, and uh, property address, and I will mail you a copy of the book. Uh, you know, and it, now more than ever, I, you know, I have what's called Zoom exhaustion. I am so <laughs> exhausted from Zoom that every, every, pretty much every two, three hours, I'm on another Zoom call. So you know, that's the new norm and just get used to it. And you're getting so much education, free education, that it's yeah. uh, fantastic. You, you know what, Brian, if Kevin's giving away something, we should probably do something too. Um, how about uh, for our membership for the 249, uh, how about we take 50 bucks off if you want to be. So with you guys that are not members and you want to become members of Bria and the Miami Day Bria, it's usually 249. Uh, you can email us uh, or go to our website, but our promo code, uh, we'll be until, I guess, tomorrow. I'll keep it until tomorrow. Save 50. So if you uh, email me, I'll put, you know, our my email address is right on the on the screen also. Uh, we'll also get you signed up too. I can't have Kevin be the only one giving away stuff. Listen, 50 <laughs> and, bucks. And, and and a type the promo code in the chat there for them in this too. Okay, yeah. Absolutely. 50 bucks and a free book. And I will tell you that when Dave mails them out, he usually puts in some other goodies. So I just say the book, but he usually fills that envelope as much as he can put in there for you. So you'll get some other goodies as well. So And I, and I know that uh, um, Keith just asked about a $100 special group here today. Let me tell you something. A member to our organization, all kidding aside, is going to get you a lot more than $100 <laughs> because um, you're going get to a, get a lot more value and education that is going to help you in, in getting into real estate or if you have a real estate business already. It's just going to help you move forward in that real estate business as well. So. On, on a side note, Kevin, 29% of the people think you should be president. So. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was going to – so my, my wife's godfather it was the mayor of Vaughan up in Canada. She's from Canada. So I always said, you know, her, her mother before she passed away was very involved in politics. So I said, I'm going to run for mayor of uh, my local town and start there. And she's like, absolutely not. And it, it, it's a lot of work, but I'm happy to get on these calls and motivate people and, uh, you know, do whatever we can do to, you know, just make a difference, you know, because that's the whole idea, right? It's all about making a difference. 100%. So, well, Kevin, thank you very much for the time today. Um, Anish and I greatly appreciate it. Thanks to, you, to all of you guys that um, joined us today. Hope you guys learned something. Make sure that you go to Bria.com. Um, to look up upcoming events. We're going to, like Anish said, we're going to be um, uh, presenting on April the 28th. I believe that is at 11 a.m., right, Anish? Yep, 11 a.m. How to find off-market deals and make big profits with it. Anish and I just had an off-market deal that we closed on and sold a week and a half ago during this quarantine, and we made about 50 grand. So there you go. If you want to learn how to do that, we'll see you guys next Tuesday, April the 28th. Everybody stay safe. Everybody stay healthy. Thank, thank you again for joining us today. And yep. see you guys soon. Thank you. We'll talk you soon. Guys. Have a good day, everyone. Thanks, guys.